Hi guys, Django here, and welcome back to my Valhelsia 5 world. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some more applied energistics too, and try to simplify and maybe demystify some of the, oh great, some of the stuff that I think is probably most frustrating about applied energistics too, and maybe keeps people away. So let's get inside, away from these phantoms, and stick around while we take a look at channels and peer-to-peer -peer networks. Okay, let's head up to our Applied Energistics 2 area. Which is up here. Now, if you've done any amount of Applied Energistics, you have probably experienced the issue of running out of channels. And even more frustrating than running out of channels is running out of space to add more cables off the sides of a single controller in order to add more channels to your entire network. So the solution to that is to spread out. And I've already been, I've already started some of that. I have removed the storage. I've removed some of the stuff and I'm, I'm putting it around my base. And let's take a quick base tour to see kind of the challenge we're dealing with, with channels. So over here, we've got our crafting computers, crafting storage, co-processing units, a crafting terminal. Uh, we've got a little bit of our storage right here, our ME drive. Here's a, a cell workbench. Over in this room, I moved our ore doubling system from downstairs, and that's going to be connected to our ME network. It's not yet, but we've got we've got that networked over here. And over here is our crafting pattern providers, molecular assemblers, and we've got all kinds of crafting set up over here. Now, all of these things in all these different rooms are all connected to our network through a peer-to-peer -peer network. So if you did any channel math while you were looking around here, let's take a look at this room over here. And we've got two towers of molecular assemblers and pattern providers set up in this kind of grid section alternating. So these pattern providers each touch three molecular assemblers so that they can share them. And this is the maximum number of things you can kind of stack together like this. Each of these towers uses eight channels because they have eight pattern providers in them. Molecular assemblers don't use channels. So you can see right here, we're using eight of 32 channels coming out here. By the time we get in here, we're using 17 of 32 channels. So there's 60, there's eight there, eight there for 16. And this pattern provider is using up one more for 17. And this crafting terminal is using up one more. So that's 18 channels. So if we were going to try to run 18 channels across all the way over there to our controllers, that'd be a very expensive run of dense smart cable to do that. But instead, this smart cable is connected through a peer-to-peer -peer tunnel. If you can see it through there, just to a single Fluix ME glass cable. So Fluix ME glass cables, like this one right here and this one right here, those carry eight channels. They're just not smart cables. They don't tell you how much is being used in them, but they're, they're, they can carry eight channels just like a regular smart cable. And the dense cables carry 32 channels. So if we can use these dense cables in a room and get 32 channels out of a connection, we can optimize the amount of resources we use for all these cables. Let's take a look over here. There's a hole in the wall and we can see that we've got Fluix ME glass cable run going all the way through there behind that wall. That's the cable that's over there. Actually, let's, let's break our way in here. So there's our in wall network and I have it running down through here. So this is the cheapest kind of cable you can get in applied energistics. It's the most effective way to make long runs of cable. And so here I have the, this room here that I showed you before, and it's coming, it's all coming over here to this controller and, and it's connected to our system through these, this peer to peer networking, which I'll explain in a second, but this whole, all that stuff that's coming through here, all those three different rooms with all kinds of things in them. It's only using three channels by the time we get here. And so that's the power of peer to peer networks. Each of those three rooms has their own P to P tunnel and each P to P tunnel uses up a single channel. So you can see three of eight channels used on this smart cable. And it's these P to P tunnels that are using these channels. We're sending 32 channels up to 32 channels through each of those p2p tunnels so here's the 18 channels that was in the kind of crafting room here's five channels that was in the storage computer room and this blue room has just got two channels used so far it's got a 
it's got a crafting terminal and a, an ME drive. That's the blue room. That's where I had the uh, the ore doubling move to. And each side of a controller can connect a dense cable and get 32 channels. So we can put more dense cables, up to eight of these, through this one eight-channel glass cable and run it out in all kinds of different directions off this ME controller. Now, our peer-to-peer -peer network here has, I put up a, a flux point right here, connected to this controller, which isn't, I don't necessarily need a controller, but then I wouldn't be able to split off in, in a couple different directions with that. Um, and if we run a 32 channel dense cable right here, then we can split those 32 channels off in four different directions with eight channels off this glass cable. We'll upgrade this to a 32 channel cable, which means we could have 30, we could have 32 separate 32 channel peer to peer tunnels running through that. So it's 32 times 32 devices spread out all around our base. And that's my goal is to set up all these different rooms that have all these different types of mods in them as we run through the Valhalla 5 playthrough here. We'll spread out all our setups, connect them all together through a peer-to-peer -to -peer tunnel like this, and we're spreading out and, and giving ourselves all kinds of room so we're not jamming all of our cables right into this one section of our base. Okay, so right over here, let's set up a, a little miniature replica of our peer-to-peer -peer network that we have set up over here. So we'll put down the ME controller, and that represents the ME controller that's right over there, and it needs power. So we'll put a flux point on it like this, and it's connected to the network, and now this is powered. And now we can set up a really simple peer-to-peer -peer network. We'll run some stuff off of this side, and we'll run stuff off of this side just like running through the wall. So if you can imagine, these are, this is going to our main network right over here. And these things are branching off, going to all kinds of different spots in the base. And now we just need to get an ME P2P tunnel. And if we look at the recipe for that, it's pretty expensive actually. It's an engineering processor, which needs a diamond, some iron and flux crystals, and we can get one P2P tunnel with that. And I have two P2P tunnels right here. There are also other kinds of P2P tunnels. So what I've been doing over here is an ME P2P tunnel sends basically an ME cable through a tunnel. So you can send eight or 32 channels, depending on whether you put dense or not cable on each end. But we can also send redstone and items and fluid energy, even light and chemicals through these tunnels. So if we've got a long stretch of this glass cable, we can send all kinds of stuff through it, through a peer-to-peer -peer tunnel. But let's start with the regular ME peer-to-peer -peer tunnel. And we'll put this here and this right here. And now we have an ME peer-to-peer -peer network. Now we can stick all kinds of these tunnels on this and we need to tell them how to connect to each other. So this, P2P tunnel right here does not know about that peer-to-peer -peer tunnel, even though they're all online because they're unlinked. And we have to link them with a memory card. We only ever really need one memory card. We can shift right click on one tunnel and you can see it created a new frequency, 92B9. You can see that up top and it got some colors on the back, which are those, I think those are probably the hex colors for 92B and 9. And now we go over here, our card now has a configuration in it, and then we just right click with it on this one. And it got the same frequency. It's got the output side. Doesn't matter for an ME network, input side and output side, but for items, fluids, and that sort of thing, it does matter a little bit more, okay? So at this point, we can put an ME network on here. Here's a, just a regular smart cable. Well, let's put a dense smart cable on here like this. Let me put a dense smart cable on this end. And now we've got basically 32 channels available on this. They're running through a single channel on this glass cable. And if we had a smart cable in here, let's just, let's put it right here. So we're, we know that it's not being connected to those dense cables. We can see here we're using one of eight channels. And now if we, that uh, put, let's put a crafting terminal on this one. Do I have a crafting terminal? Let's grab a quick crafting terminal. And 
Thankfully, I can make that. And we'll put that right here. And over on this end, we'll put ME storage. So we've got an ME chest. I'll put this down right here. And a storage cell in it. And there we go. Now, this ME chest can connect to this crafting terminal. But why not? Because there's no power going to these things. Our peer-to-peer -peer network is powered. We've got the flux point on it, right? However, this P2P tunnel doesn't transfer power. So we just need to power, we need to bridge the power around here. Like this. And now this device is online because it's getting power. I put a quartz fiber right here, which keeps it from connecting the network. If I just let that connect, then the peer-to-peer -peer -peer tunnel would essentially be getting bypassed because this terminal would connect to this network directly. And we don't want that because that uses up one entire channel. And likewise, let's transfer power from here, across, bridge it across. Just have to power this first smart cable over here. And now this is online. It's got nothing in it. And we're not connected to our main network, remember. But if we put something in here, like these two cobblestone. Oh, there is something in it. I had it filtered. There was dirt and redstone in it. So now the cobblestone is also in there. And if we go take a look at this drive, well, it's kind of got an interface on it. However, this interface would show any other storage in the network as well. But if we take a look at the drive itself, you can see that it's got these things in it and kind of peek into it. Now this is essentially what we have going on over here. So this crafting terminal represents this entire kind of main network over here, including these controllers, crafting terminal, all this stuff that's connected directly to it. Running through a peer-to-peer -peer tunnel, three of them here, three channels, three peer-to-peer -peer channels are running through here. You can see them right there and they come out here and run all the way along through the wall and come out in those three rooms. And I'm just using these colors of the cable doesn't matter. It just keeps them from connecting them, connecting to each other. And also just lets me keep it straight with which one is going to which room. Let's look at some of these other types of, of P2P tunnels because this is pretty neat. If we put on our P2P network here, a redstone tunnel, let's put a redstone tunnel right here. And let's put an item. We also have item tunnels in here. Now, in order to make these different types of tunnels, we need to attune them. So when you make this one, you get a basic ME tunnel. To get a redstone tunnel, you right click it with some sort of redstone device, like a lever, redstone itself, an item P2P tunnel, you right click with a chest and item based things. And likewise, fluid, bucket, energy tunnel, some sort of energy device. They're all listed in here, a light tunnel. You can send light through these tunnels. That's pretty neat. I don't know how useful that is, but it's pretty cool. But here's a couple of tunnels that you might find useful. Energy would be super useful if we didn't have a wireless network in this pack. Oh, let me, I'll say that right up front. So let's grab a lever so we can demonstrate the redstone and a redstone lamp. And we've got some redstone right here. Okay, so if we, first of all, let's take a look at attuning these things. So if I right click this with a chest, it turns it into an item tunnel. If I right click it with redstone, it turns it into, or a lever, it turns it into a redstone tunnel. Now like the ME tunnels, we have to link them. But before we run over there, let's just quickly make a simple redstone contraption and put a lever right here. Okay. And on this end, let's put our redstone tunnel right here and let's stick the redstone lamp right on it okay so now it's kind of silly because we could just run the redstone directly but pretend we're like thousands of blocks away and we wanted to send a redstone signal from one part of our base to another part of our base now this isn't going to work because we haven't linked these controllers I mean the the tunnels so we need our memory card we shift right click on this one you see it has no frequency Shift it with the memory card. Now it's 7692. It's got some colors on the back. And we just right click on this one. And now they're linked. And this is the, again, there's an output side and an input side. Not sure it matters with redstone, but now 
if I send the red so signal through the tunnel, it's get it coming out on this end. Pretty neat. Now we're using three channels because we have three different tunnels connected. Now I haven't placed down the other end of my item tunnel yet, so let's do that. And we'll put this over here. Now this is an item tunnel. It's unlinked. We'll make this one the input side. It's got two, two D8. You can see it's got its own colors. And we right click on this one. And now it's linked as the output side. Now if we stick a chest on here, I think if we just put a chest on here, it will not pull. This thing can't pull from things. It can only have things pushed into it. So we need to use a hopper. Then we can put a chest on top of the hopper. Okay. So now if we put stuff in here, we can put these stone bricks and this chest in here. They've already moved through and they come out in this chest. So this has basically just turned this into a giant hopper chain. And it's using one of the three channels. Each pair of tunnels uses a channel. Now that we've done that, let's take a look at our network over here. And let's, let's demonstrate the redstone while, uh, while we do it. Let's just grab, let's just grab these two things here. All right. So now we've got three tunnels on here, each carrying a dense smart cable, right? We can put another tunnel, right? Let's put the redstone tunnel here. And put our lever right here. And let's follow this one. That goes down through the floor into our villager room. So let's quickly go down there. Put the other end of this down here. And here it is right here. And we can just put this right here. Put the lamp on it. We need to link it. Because they're not linked anymore because we broke them. And we'll make this the input side. 2C48. And we'll run back up. Link the other side. And that's the output side. So let's see if this let's see if this will work with redstone. Because with an ME network, it there's no sides really, input or output. It's just connecting them. For redstone, there is an input and an output. All right, so let's swap them around. Makes sense for redstone, right? We don't my, it gives us kind of one directional redstone, which, which is kind of neat. So now this is unlinked. It's A4, A8, and we'll link this one. The redstone switch is still on. And I think we might have to toggle that for it to work. Let's run back and forth one more time after they're linked. I seem to have recall this. Yep, there we go. Now it's lit. So input and output matters for redstone and you can't connect them before the redstone signal is enabled. You have to toggle it. So it, it sends the redstone signal. So there you go. And now we've got, we've got a lamp down here. So maybe we can get the attention of our villagers from above. I don't know. Definitely think of some interesting uses for remote redstone for sure. So there is using this channel this fluix cable now has one channel running across it this one has three this one still only has three so you can see by putting a controller in the middle of this we can not only power it but get more diversity uh, by splitting up the the channels we could just as easily run one of these outputs from this p2p tunnel down there to the villager room as well and get a a crafting terminal down there that would be a great use of that. But again, here we have right now, this P to, blue P2P tunnel is going into the kind of ore doubling room. This one is going into the, you can see the orange cable over there, our computer room. And this purple one is going into our auto crafting room. Pretty neat. So from here, we're going to connect our mining operation over here. We'll have the digital miner mining ores, getting the ores out of here. We're going to process them with a formation plane and an annihilation plane to get fortune on pro automatically processing on those ores. And then we'll send it through the doubler and get like six times ore doubling. Next time, we're going to set that up in this room. So I hope that made peer-to-peer -peer networks a little more clear for you. They're really useful, especially spreading out your base, uh, making things uh, much more organized. And so there you go. I think we're going to wrap it up there. Really quick video on peer-to-peer -peer networks and tunnels. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, 
please drop them in the comments. If you liked the video, if this was helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you.